Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at hepatic circulation, which is the blood supply to and from the liver. Now, first thing is, this blood supply is also known as the splanchnik circulation. And what we need to do is first begin at the heart. And we know that every minute, the heart ejects around about five liters of blood five liters per minute, which we call our cardiac output. This is obviously coming out of the aorta. Now, as the aorta descends, it's obviously going to descend down through the thoracic cavity, move through the diaphragm into the abdominal cavity, and then what we find once we're in the abdominal cavity and we're looking at the abdominal aorta, is there's a number of branches in which the blood supply from the heart is delivering oxygen and nutrients to various gastrointestinal tissues or structures. Let's have a look. Now, the first one we wanna look at is that of the celiac artery. The next is the superior mesenteric. And then the last one we wanna look at is the inferior mesenteric. Now what you're gonna find is that as the blood moves down and goes into the celiac trunk or the celiac artery, there's a couple of branches that come off here. Now the amount of blood that's coming through here through to the celiac artery is around about 700 mils per minute. Of this, 400 mils is going to the liver. Actually, between three to 500 mils 300 to 500 mils per minute is going to the liver. Now the name of this particular artery is called the hepatic artery. So, five mils per minute coming down the aorta, 700 mils per minute going into the celiac artery. Of that 700 mils, around about three to 500 goes through the hepatic artery and gives oxygen and nutrients to the liver. All right, next thing we wanna see is the blood supply that's coming through to the superior mesenteric. That's going to be also around about 700 mils per minute. And then the inferior mesenteric, that's gonna be around about 400 mils per minute. And as you can see, we've got part of the celiac is gonna feed the spleen and the stomach, superior mesenteric, pancreas, small intestines, part of the colon, and the inferior mesenteric, part of the colon as well. All right, this, these oxygen, or this blood supply that's containing oxygen and nutrients to feed these tissues are very important. Obviously on the other end of the capillary beds, there's going to be various veins that drain the deoxygenated or more carbon dioxide saturated blood in, and these veins all join up together talk about in a sec. The other thing is the whole point of the gastrointestinal tract is to take macronutrients, proteins, fats, carbohydrates, for example, and break them down into their smallest components, the most absorbable components, which can include things like glucose, galactose, fructose for carbohydrates, for example, fatty acids and glycerols for fats, and amino acids for proteins. They get absorbed from these particular structures into this venous supply as well. And what you're gonna find is that this venous supply from all these structures come together and go to the liver. Really important. So we've actually got two lots of blood supply going to the liver. The hepatic artery, which is oxygenated blood, and the, what we haven't called this yet, but it's called the portal vein. So let's write that down. Which is delivering nutrient rich but oxygen poor blood from all of these digestive structures. And it's actually bringing in around about 1,000 to 1,300 mils per minute. So compare that to the 300 to 500 mils per minute. Most of the blood that's going to the liver is actually coming from the portal vein. And what you're gonna, this is at rest, right? So what you're gonna find is after a meal, when the demand of nutrient absorption is high from these particular structures, that the ratio shifts to 90% of the blood being delivered to the liver is coming from the portal vein after a meal. That's called post 
prandial, really important. So the liver has two dedicated blood supplies. You've got the hepatic artery, which is nutrient poor, but oxygen rich. And the portal vein, which is nutrient rich, but oxygen poor. And most is coming from the portal vein. Now the thing is the liver needs to drain, but what is it draining? It's obviously draining into a vein called the, or multiple hepatic veins, but what does the liver do with all this stuff coming in? Obviously it uses the oxygen and the nutrients in order for it to sustain its own existence, but what happens with all this stuff that gets drained from these gastrointestinal organs is they go into certain structures in the liver called sinusoids. Now the sinusoids will take out bacteria or invading pathogens, things you don't want in the blood supply of the body. The other thing that it does is it takes all the water-soluble, non-fat nutrients, so proteins and uh, carbohydrates, and it stores around about half to two-thirds of them in the liver itself. So the liver is a primary storage unit for these particular uh, non-fatty water-soluble uh, nutrients. Everything else gets drained into the hepatic vein, or the hepatic veins, which then go to the inferior vena cava. And then that goes back to the heart, and the whole process begins again. Now, a couple of other important points is that the blood supply coming into the liver is low, the pressure of which is low, and it's around about nine millimeters of mercury. That's quite low. And the pressure of blood coming out is around about, on average, zero millimeters of mercury, which means it is a low pressure system. But look how much blood's coming in, in total. It's a high volume system. So high volume of blood, low pressure or low resistance. Now the reason why I'm telling you this is because because all of this blood that's coming in has to go through these sinusoids, if you damage the liver through alcoholism or through poor diet or through a disease like hepatitis, for example, these sinusoids can become fibrotic, scar-like. And what it does is it starts to constrict the blood vessels coming in and the blood pressure backs up and the blood pressure will increase to around about 15 millimeters of mercury, maybe 20 millimeters of mercury. So, it's still not that high, but it's significantly higher than nine millimeters of mercury. And that means all this blood backs up, backs up, backs up into these particular tissues. And this is what we call portal hypertension, which is a common sign of cirrhosis, which is liver damage, okay? So what we've got here is a quick run through of the blood vessels and the circulation of the liver.